All right, hello, welcome. So this is a video for chapter 15 to walk you through the assignment set. And so uh, this is, uh, I usually do these uh, for my live classes when I don't have um, class. I'll put these up on, on the uh, website to help you out. So anyway, so we're, we're in chapter 15. We've got exercises that we need to do, right? It doesn't look like we have a problem set on this one. So we're going to go, the very first exercise that we have on the list here is exercise 9. Uh, so exercise 9 is a fair value adjustment uh, to available for sale securities. Okay. And so the, the way this works is available for sale securities the fair value adjustment is recorded to um, the unrealized uh, gain in comprehensive income. Okay, so it's kind of a balance that carries forward from year to year. So it's dealt with a little different than trading securities. So the way the way it's going to work for this one, uh, let's put up some of the information here. It's pretty simple. So uh, this one is 2014's amount, right? So I'll put that up here. Uh, and this is just kind of to show you how it works out. Um, so we've got the cost and we've got the uh, fair value, right? So for 2014, the cost was 120,000, $120,483. And the fair value was 118,556. Okay. Now we've got 2015, and the uh, cost is 6120, and the fair value is 9271. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so the way these work is, it's kind of like an adjustment, and we got to go through this three-step. Well, it is an adjustment, and we have to go through the three-step adjustment process. Okay. So let's do our let's do our gain or loss here, right? Okay, so our gain or loss for each one of these is, uh, let's see, equals our, our cost minus our fair value, right? Um, yeah, that'll work. Let's do it the other direction. Let's do our fair value minus our cost, right? So our fair value, current fair value minus our cost, and that'll give us uh, the loss for 2014, and for 2015, it'll give us a gain, right? Okay, so the way this works is in the, uh, and we've got to do an entry here, right? So for the first year, we don't have to record this. We have to just do it for 2015, but to show you how, why 2015 is the way it is, I'll show you uh, 2000 and um, 14, right? So 2014's entry was like this. So the account, um, the debit and credit, okay? So on the account side, for this, it's gonna be a loss. So we're actually gonna record a, a debit on the loss side, right? So it's unrealized loss equity, okay, is the account. And then the credit for this, for 2014, is going to be a uh, fair value adjustment for available for sales long term. Okay, so we'll put it put it like that, uh, and it, it was one thousand nine hundred twenty-seven, one thousand nine hundred twenty-seven. Okay, all right. So this is the way that that it was last year, right? And so now we need to figure out what it is this year. So in order to do that, what we have to do is we have to first ask ourselves, like all adjustments, what is the balance in the account? Okay, so the balance in the account was last year's unrealized loss uh, here, right? And so the fair value is also here. So, uh, the, so the balance is um, a loss of one thousand nine hundred twenty-seven dollars. 
So this year, the, the, sec the second question that we ask when we do adjustments is, what should the balance be? So the balance should be uh, this amount right up here, right? So it should be the $30,151, uh, okay? So what, what that lets us know is, is that we have to, in order to get the balance to be that $30,151, we need to reverse out, first of all, the loss. Because we were going for a $30,151 gain, okay? So this is our available for sale balance. Uh, as we sell stuff, of course, we're gonna have, we're gonna, you know, dispose of it, disposition, whatever, sell it, and so our balances change from year to year, right? And so the way it works here is we have to back out the loss first, and then we have to record the gain. Okay, and so we've got our um, our fair value uh, adjustment account which will be here this time it's going to be a debit and we're actually going to do a debit for not only the uh, gain amount but we're also going to add in what the loss was so we can back it out okay so that's our total amount so this is our gain for 2015 plus our loss which we need to back out uh, that lets us uh, get the balance that we need. So the balance in the account in the end is going to be 30151 That's because it has um, a loss balance currently in it. So what we need to do then is we've got an unrealized uh, loss on equity that we're backing out, which is 1927 And then we've got ourselves an unrealized gain that we're going to put in here. Okay, and that gain is going to be 3151. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, put a description in of record um, value of uh, available for sale securities. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that is exercise nine. Hopefully that one helps you out there. Uh, the next one is exercise 11. So we're going to do, I'll make it a little bigger here so you can see it. Okay, so in exercise 11, we have a list here of, uh, it's, it's basically a description, right? And the required, uh, the description for each of these uh, different types of transactions and different investments. So what we need to figure out is we need to fig uh, figure out the required thing. So one and two. Um, the required, the first thing is we need to identify whether each investment should be classified as short term or long term. For each long term investment, we need to indicate which of the long term investment classification should be placed. Okay, so the long term investment uh, classifications are the ones we covered in class, right? And some of those. Um, that are uh, not short-term qualifying investment classifications. Okay, and then number two, we're going to prepare a journal entry dated uh, at the end of 2015 and to record the fair value adjustment of the long-term investments in available for sale securities. Okay, um, and then this company had no long-term investments prior to the year, so we don't have to worry about any existing balances. We're just going to go off of the things that we have here to begin with. Okay, so our uh, our required, so this is required, uh, required one here is gonna, we're, we're gonna go ahead and list these out here for uh, alphabetically, right? So it's A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, so those are all of them. So the very first one, um, so the, the Brava company bonds, so these are going to be, so, uh, go ahead. I would encourage you to go ahead and list out as before you watch the video, go ahead and list these out. So pause here, list them out what you think they are, either long-term or short-term, and then continue the video again. 
So I'm going to go ahead and continue here and, and lay these things out. So the um, so the so the the Brava company bonds in A. These are long term. Uh, held to maturity debt securities right so these are debt securities so for debt for held to maturity the only things that qualifies is debt not not equity right okay so the uh, B here so the the Bay Bridge stock here in this case is a long-term investment in equity securities okay where the investor has a significant influence over the investee. So this one here is is long term, um, and it's going to be significant influence. Okay, there we go. And B, the this Buffa is the company name. The Buffa stock is a uh, long term investment. Um, in available for sales equity securities. So this one is long term. And really it's intent that, that shows this stuff, right? Long term available for sale equity. Okay. And then D here, uh, Newton stock is a long term investment in available for sale security. So, so again, this is long term um, available for sale get my thing right there we go and then e the very last one here is uh, interesting so this one is a uh, this farmer stock is marketable and is held as an investment uh, of cash available for operations so it is a current asset so again the uh, this one is a current asset so So anyways, so, so this one's not any of the, this one's not considered available for sale. This one is uh, uh, current asset. So it's a short term, really, is what it is. Okay, so now the second part of this, required two here, is where we break down the, uh, we're going to prepare a journal entry to record a fair value adjusted. For these okay and it gives us actually in the book it gives you pretty much the answer on this one so and you can work it out um, with the Buffa common stock and the Newton common stock both of those are going to come into this and you can total up the cost and the fair value and it's going to give you a fair value adjustment Uh, and a credit. Okay, so in this in this case, it's going to be a fair uh, value adjustment uh, for available for sales securities long term. Okay, and then it's going to be an unrealized. Uh, Gain, right? So it's going to be a credit. Equity. Okay, there we go. Whoop. That didn't turn out like I thought it should. Got to get the Q in there. Here we go. All right. So then the amount here we can throw in here is, is calculated. Uh, so when you calculate this amount, so it gives it to you really uh, when you look at the uh, book. But the amount is calculated by adding up, again, it is the Buffa common stock and the uh, Newton common stock. So these two items right here, right? Those, these are our available for sale long-term uh, equity accounts. So and then the debit in this case is 10825 Credit is the same. Okay, so that's exercise 11. So we're cruising along here. We're going to exercise uh, 12. 
trying to think if I missed one here. Ah, ah, you know what? I did miss, I did miss two of them. I'll be darned. If you're watching this video, you're probably thinking, man, Mr. Bell, you totally missed uh, two exercises, which I did. So I will uh, back up and do those uh, two exercises here at the beginning. That's kind of funny. I totally uh, overshot the mark here. So let's do, uh, it's actually exercise uh, six is one that I missed. And so I'm going to drag that to the front here and we'll blow it up here. So exercise six. So in this case, we're also preparing journal entries. Um, and we're going to, um, uh, we have to determine which items are short term and long term, right? And so, and we have to do the journal entries for each of these uh, A through G here. So the very first one here, as we read through that one, we see that uh, this one is a uh, a, a short term, and so we're in we're we're in calendar year 2015, so that helps us track that as as well. So. Um, so this one's only a 90-day note here on the very first one. So this is A, right? And we're going to have a date, and uh, we're going to have a count, and we're going to have debit and credit, right, on these. Okay, so the very first one here, uh, this is uh, February 15th. Okay, and the account that we're going to use on this one, so we're buying some short-term investments held to maturity. They're 90-day uh, notes is what they are. So here, in this case, it's short-term invest. Uh, there we go. Mint held to maturity. AG is the actual uh, company's initials, so that's what we're using there. Okay, and then our um, credit on this one is going to be cash, right? So we're going to pay cash for them, and it's going to be $160,000. Okay, there we go. So let's get our dollars here, and there we go. Okay, so they're formatted correctly. All right, so our next one here is B, as we go down through here. So this one actually is uh, March 22nd. Um, this one, as we look at it, this is a long-term investment, right? So long-term, it says right there, long-term investment available for sale, and uh, it's gonna we're going to be buying that. So uh, we're going to be putting it in. At fair market, which is uh, 700 shares times 51, and then we're just going to add on the fee on the end. We're not; it doesn't get multiplied or anything. It's just added on or chunked on. Uh, our fee is so, uh, and this is long-term invest available for sale. Uh, this one's Fran is the company that we're buying here. Uh, in this case, it's going to be $35,850. And here's cash. $850. Okay. So each of these, we can also put descriptions in here. So the very first one, we can say uh, purchased 90-day... Uh, 10% notes, something like that. Okay, and then the second one is going to be uh, purchased uh, 700 shares of Franco. Common. All right, so then our next one here is C. Uh, that one's going to be May 15th, OK, 
Okay, so this one here, what we're doing is we're selling, right? So this is our our 90-day note here that we're going to be as it matures here. So we're going to receive some cash. In this case, we're going to receive $164,000 in cash, right? And um, that means our short-term investments up here is going to be our credit. Okay, and then... Uh, so we're going to reduce that by the amount that we paid for it. And then we've, we're getting a bunch of interest revenue here at the end. Okay. So the interest revenue is $4,000 if we calculate all that interest out. Okay. And you, we have to use the fraction of year with this. So it's really important. It's an annual interest rate of 10%. We have to go 90 over 360 uh is going to be our fraction that we're going to use to calculate the interest. So that's an important part of this one. So here is uh, collected proceeds uh, of 10% or 10% note. Okay. All right, our next one here is D. We we're just chucking down, chunking down through here. Is going to be uh, July 30th, and this one is going to be. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and pause, and I'll come back after I do a couple of these, and uh, we'll continue on here. All right, so we're continuing on here. So um, we're on letter D here. So we've got E, F, and uh, G still to go here. So D is going to be a short-term investment. So we're actually purchasing some notes here. And the notes really are, are short-term notes, OK? Uh, so we just have basically the short-term investment and the cash that's going out the door. Uh, September 1st E here is we're receiving some dividends from the stock that we received, right? So it's just cash and, and dividend revenue. There is no increasing or decreasing of any value here because we don't have uh, over 20% of the of the stock, right? In that case, we'd have a, a, a different journal entry. Okay, so uh, F here is we are selling 350 shares of Fran stock. So the cash is for what the sale price is, right? 350 shares times the sale price. And um, then we have to go the original value, okay, times the percent or the fraction of 350 out of the original amount. I think it was 700 original amount of shares. So it's basically just half of that, right? So we're splitting the value in half. And then uh, we calculate a gain off of that. Okay, so we actually received more than our uh, carrying value on those investments. Uh, the very last one here is we are receiving uh, revenue on that 8% uh, note that we got up there. So the revenue is uh, due on October 30th, and that's when we receive the revenue. Um, so so that's, that's really the end of, of uh, exercise 6. Hopefully that helps you, and we'll cruise on to exercise 8. All right, so uh, we're going to do exercise eight. So I've got it all laid out here. You can lay yours out in a similar fashion. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're trying to calculate the uh, fair value adjustment, okay, for this uh, portfolio of um, available for sale uh, uh, investments. Okay, okay, so what we want to do is they're all going to be grouped together. So what we're going to do is we're going to add each of these columns up the cost and the fair value and, and find out the difference okay so the uh, total for the for the cost here is let's see and we can actually uh, make this into a dollar amounts and format it there we go and then we will slide this one over we've already summed that column so we'll sum this column here and so our fair value is less than our cost so we're gonna have a loss right and so what we do here is we go our fair value minus our cost 
and that's going to give us our $850 loss. Okay, and so I've already got the journal entry set up uh, over here. Okay, so our journal entry is going to be um, unrealized loss on equity. That'll be a, a $850 debit. And then the credit here is going to be the fair, fair value adjustment for available for sales security short term. Okay, so that's that's what it looks like. That's exercise eight. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do here is we're going to walk through uh, exercise 12. So exercise 12 is the last exercise in this assignment set. Okay, and so what we're doing here is we're preparing journal entries to record the following transactions, right? And there's a whole list in 2015, and there's also a list in for 2016. So we're crossing years, which uh, is going to maybe uh, make things a little more complicated, but we'll hopefully keep everything uh, straight. All right, so the, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to buy some uh, long-term uh, stock, right? And so on the long-term stock, we see that we have um, the, the actual amount of the stock, right? So we know what the stock is, and we know what the broker's fee is. So that's the combination there, okay? And we know also that this, since we know the total amount of stock outstanding, uh, we also know that we have um, a, a controlling, not, not a controlling, but a uh, significant influence in this uh, company, right? Substantial influence. And so we go ahead and do our long-term investment here and, um, and our cash out the door, right? So we just need to make sure we know that that we're going to be we're going to start tracking this using the equity method okay so um september one we have uh so we're going to record a receipt of cash dividends okay so what this is doing just like i said in class right so we're, we're kind of tracking this like this is our partnership account or, or you know a, a, a balance here for the long-term investment for this so when we get a dividend, that actually decreases the uh, carrying value of the long-term investment. Okay, so we're decreasing the long-term investment here as the cash comes in for, from the dividend. So December 31st, uh, when it, what ends up happening is we then increase our long-term investment by the percentage of ownership, right? So we know what the income is that's reported. We go back up here and we say, okay, we've got a third of the stock. So we're going to take a third of this income that's been uh, announced, and we are going to put that into our long-term investments. And we're going to record this as earnings from long-term investments. Okay. So so that's actual earnings that we, we report. Uh, this is not unrealized gains. So this is just earnings that we report. Um, as part it basically their income is our income right if we have a significant influence okay go, moving on to 2016 here we've got um, uh, our another dividend coming in right so it's going to reduce our long-term investments again with the cash coming in then it, uh, then we have two things that happen at the end of this year uh, so we're gonna uh, we're going to in include the income again. We still owe a third of the company, so we're going to include the third of the income that comes in there. Okay, and now we're going to sell some of the shares that we purchased. Okay, so the the amount that we we sell it for is is stated in the textbook, right? And we're going to take one third of our current balance. So we've got to figure out what our balance is. And this is, and this down here is something you can build to basically track the balance, okay? To figure out what our what our uh, value is, okay? So our original cost is right here. So this is the original cost, right? Every time we get dividends, it, it decreases the balance. Every time we get we see the earnings, it increases it, right? So we come down here to the bottom. And then we say, okay, here is our 
carrying value for this stock that we have a significant influence in. And um, then what we have to do is we have to say, okay, that we're selling 10,000 out of our 30,000. So that's basically one third, right, that we're selling. So we uh, calculate how much of this balance is one third, right? And that is our, um, that's our carrying value. So the cash that we get for it is above our carrying value on our books. So therefore we have a gain that we record. So that's that's uh, the last thing for this um, chapter. Hopefully, uh, this some of this is sinking in. You understand kind of um, some of the intricacies of this. Really, it's just knowing the rules and knowing what type of investment you're dealing with and applying the rules to the investment as you do the journal entries. So um, we'll talk to you later. Um, and uh, we'll, uh, hopefully, hopefully you're uh, learning as we go. Thanks. Bye.